Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to give a few of my tips and suggestions for having a natural birth. So natural birth is something that has become really near and dear to my heart just because I've had two natural births. They both were what I consider very successful, very enjoyable overall. I mean, it's birth, so it only gets so enjoyable though. A lot of these things we did do with our first birth, a few of them are things that we wish we would have done for the first birth that we did do the second. So I feel like if I were to have a third baby and I were to have a third natural birth or a third water birth, these are things I would for sure make sure that I'm doing the third time around. My first suggestion is to take some sort of birthing class. My husband and I chose to do Bradley birthing classes. It's called husband coached birthing, but the idea is basically that you have a partner who's alongside of you the whole entire duration of your labor and they're very involved from beginning to end. The reason why I think this is so important is because it helps you better understand your body and what to look forward to in a birth not just simply coping mechanisms, but actually being able to have confidence going into birth and knowing what your body is doing in each phase. Honestly, I think it gave him a lot more confidence the first time around knowing what to expect. By the second time, he was a pro, so he was good. My other tip and suggestion is to be sure to stretch and to exercise as much as you can while pregnant. I know this seems kind of obvious, but the stretching part, I think sometimes we can neglect and fail to do, especially towards the end when you're so incredibly tired and so incredibly huge. Stretching, exercising, as well as squatting, I think can be really Really beneficial just that way your body has a little bit more stamina built up to be able to go through the laboring process because it is really hard work my other big tip is to know what your options are if your baby is still breached by the time that they need the baby to be in the correct position because of the scoliosis that i have with my back my babies tend to want to sit very transverse and not in the right position so at 36 weeks both of my babies would still not be head down the two things that i did where first I made sure to go to the chiropractor pretty regularly throughout my pregnancy, but especially during those last few weeks when you need the baby to stay head down. By getting adjusted, you can really make sure that everything's in alignment so the baby's not trying to get into a different position because he can tell that something's off and it's making him uncomfortable. The other thing that I did was I followed the Spinning Babies website it's basically a bunch of these crazy exercises that are safe that you can do to help the baby flip. I've had a lot of success using this as well as going to the chiropractor. And like I mentioned, I was able to get both of my babies to turn from being transverse to being head down in the optimal position. I highly, highly recommend a water birth. Water births have been so amazing for me. There's a lot of benefits for them that I don't think people completely realize. One of the first benefits of having a water birth is that the warm water in the tub can really help ease the intensity of the contractions that you feel. And because the water helps ease your contractions, it can really help your body as a whole relax, which can help you progress labor even faster, especially if you're prone to back labor. The water is also really beneficial in helping you not tear. I've heard this from a few different people and I feel like I can attest to this because the water helps kind of loosen up that skin and it helps it to stretch a lot more easily. When you actually go into labor there's a few tips that I have learned throughout my two births that have really helped progress labor so my first tip for laboring is to walk and get out there so what I mean by this is to just get up whether it's walking around your house or your neighborhood my firstborn was in October and my secondborn was in January so we were kind of limited when it came to the January baby on where we could walk so we actually went to the mall on a little risky with the germs but we went to the mall and we were walking around I think we went to the mall three times that week we would just continue to do laps it was a great way for me to just be able to get out of the house take my head off of things and just walk <laughs> it can really help when you're in labor and when you're having contractions to get out of your house you kind of just want to seclude yourself in your house when you start labor but by getting out of your house in a public location it can really help you to push through the pain so other people don't see it and distract you from what's actually happening obviously don't do this if you're like way deep into labor. This is like when you first start getting those mild contractions and you wanna get things moving. Get out of the house, go walk around Target, go pick a mall, go to Ikea, somewhere where it's big and open and you can just walk the aisles. My next one is a not so fun one that I strongly recommend doing and that is to squat during intense contractions. Now it will hurt and it hurts really bad, not in a hurt that's like you're hurting your body. I'm not talking about like pushing or doing anything that would cause injury to yourself. When you're having a strong contraction by squatting or even sitting on the toilet, it TMI, but we're talking about labor here. It really helps to kind of like open up that area down there and kind of like, I don't wanna say shortens the length of your 
it just helps really progress contractions. It hurts really bad when you're having those really strong contractions, but it can really speed up labor, which leads me into kind of my next tip, which is reframe your mind when it comes to pain and natural birth. And I think one of the biggest things that I did to prepare for my second labor that was different from my first was to really mentally prepare myself for the fact that it's going to hurt, but it's a different sort of pain. It's a pain that is a good pain. And when you're working through those contractions, reminding yourself that the pain is helping you achieve a goal and that the stronger the pain gets, the closer you are getting to that goal. I think a good analogy is like for a runner or for someone who's used to exercising quite frequently, well, it's not me, is the idea of pushing yourself to get to that finish line, right? Like I don't think any runner or even any athlete would say that it's at all easy when they're running or when they're running a marathon. Like there is pain in that process, but the pain is bringing them to a final result and an end goal. So if you can look at your pain as being a means to an end, then you can kind of accept it and breathe through it and move past it. I also think it helps to get your husband on board with that, this idea as well. I think it can be really difficult for your spouse to see you in such agonizing pain and think that something's wrong. So helping your spouse understand that this pain is a good pain and that this pain is helping bring your child to you sooner. Another thing to consider is what sort of help and coaching do you want when you're laboring? With my firstborn son, I pushed for over two hours, which is crazy. But with my secondborn son, it was less than 15 minutes. Do you want someone to coach you while you're pushing? to tell you how hard, how long, how fast, how frequent. Do you want perineum support while you're actually pushing out the baby? For my firstborn son, when I was pushing him out, the midwife immediately was doing something called perineum support where essentially they're supporting that area of skin where the baby's coming out. They're helping just apply a certain amount of pressure to help prevent any sort of tearing. With my firstborn son, I did not realize that she was trying to help me not to tear and I thought she was pushing on me and so I freaked out and I told her I was like no that hurts I hurt take your hands off and she immediately took her hands off and when she did I felt like a really sharp pain which I'm assuming is from where I tore like just a teeny tiny bit so for the next baby I made sure to say that I wanted perineum support and I let her support me the entire time and I think it was a combination of a lot of other things, but as a result of all of that, I didn't tear, which I'm really thankful for. My midwives have given me a lot of wisdom and a lot of insight into what's good pushing and bad pushing. And one of the best tips I feel like I've heard from them as well as other moms is to remember not to push with all your might. A lot of women are tempted to push really, really hard when you have that strong urge to push. You just wanna like bear down. But the problem is when you bear down so hard and so quickly, especially when the baby's crowned you can cause tearing. So one of the best tips my midwives taught me was to control your pushes. And if you look back in my birthing video that I have, you'll notice that I'm really quiet for a long amount of time. And I think I even edited part of it out because it was so long. But basically during that time, I'm doing a very quiet, very controlled, like eyes closed pushing. They're just small pushes to get the baby down and out. So she had me do medium to large size pushes to actually get the baby to the point to crown. And then once the baby was crowning, she had me doing small, steady, pulsing pushes. And that really helped me not to tear and it allowed the skin to stretch out slowly versus one sudden rush of, well, a head. <laughs> one thing that I didn't know and came to know my second birth was that that burning sensation you feel when you're pushing out the baby isn't your skin tearing necessarily, it's actually your skin stretching. So she tried to reassure me whenever I was pushing out my second born, when I told her it's burning, I was scared that I was tearing and she could sense that fear in my voice and she told me, no, the burning's a good thing. Let that burn happen. It means that your skin is stretching. The minute that she said that, I was able to completely relax and I was able to focus on pushing out the baby instead of, am I tearing? It also helped me to embrace that feeling and sensation that I had knowing that my body was fine and I wasn't in any sort of harm. It was just simply part of the birthing process. My final tip is to practice the different ways that your husband can help and support you during labor. For my firstborn son, he really did try, but he still felt a little helpless. He wasn't quite sure what he needed to do to support me. Some of the reasons he felt like this were first, I had really, really severe back labor pains. I also had a much longer labor than we expected. And finally, this one kind of surprised both of us. I did not want to be touched 
at all during my labor with my firstborn son. So I think that really discouraged him from trying different things to help me because he wanted me to feel comfortable. So for our second born son, we practiced ahead of time counter pressure and different pressure points that he could use to help ease back labor if I had it. I told him exactly where, I told him how much pressure, and we just practiced. So when I was laboring with my second born son, we had our plan down and he would just follow me around the house and the kitchen and he would just apply that counter pressure anytime he saw me go into a contraction. So even if I was squatting, he was right there behind me doing counter pressure. Or if I was laying down, he was doing that counter pressure. And I really think that was a game changer for us the second time around. I also found that last time I kept getting hot and cold and hot and cold. And so they kept adjusting the temperature of the water, but it was very distracting. So this time around, I plan to just have the water as hot as I could. And then Josh would continuously apply cold, wet washcloths on my forehead and my neck. This really helped me regulate my body temperature. It kept me from getting overheated while I was in the hot water and it felt so refreshing and so good. Hey buddy, you wanna come over here? Mommy's filming a video. Did you just wake up from your nap? Can you wave hi? Hi. Do you know what mommy's doing? Yeah. I'm filming a video and I'm talking about when I had you and when I had Cade. Be right back. Okay. I gotta make this quick because the second one's waking up soon. <laughs> I think my biggest thing I would love to just leave you with if you're considering a natural birth is don't let other people discourage you. I'm talking about family or friends that sometimes mean well but can be a little bit insensitive or harsh when it comes to your plans to have a natural birth or a water birth or a home birth or a birthing center birth. Remember that if you and your husband are in agreement about this and this is something you both feel at peace with and your doctors have given you approval to have a safe natural birth, there's no one else that should really speak into whether you should or shouldn't. I think natural birth is a choice that every mother should get to make. It's not anything that someone else should push on you on whether you should do or shouldn't do. I would never redo either of my labors and they really truly were amazing. They both were very different. The first was very long and very hard and the second was much, much easier. But it still is really hard work. Remember that you can do it and your body was made to give birth. And even if that birth doesn't happen the way you wanted it to, at the end of the day, when you get to see that precious baby born, it's all worth it. So if you're looking for someone to encourage you and say, you can do it, please hear me. You can do it. If you have a question that I didn't answer here, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you with that answer. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please feel free to give it a like and even subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.